Hey guys, welcome back. Patrick here. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating some floating text. We're going to be looking at the fog feature, creating a function that allows us to traverse our scene, uh, add objects, and subtract objects. Uh, so what basically what we're going to do, I'm going to open this up right quick, is we're going to create this kind of scene with all of these different geometries. They all kind of say the same thing, but that's something you can uh, change later on if you want to play with the code, uh, which I will definitely give to you. So let's go ahead and walk through this code. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up these controls just so you can see. Uh, we use the base camera uh, function that I had written uh, earlier. So you'll, you'll recognize a lot of the stuff that's been in here. And that allows us basically to move our lights around and move the camera around uh, along with uh, change the rotation. But we added these little bits up here, add text and delete text. And this about uh, base essentially allows you to traverse your scene. So we're gonna be looking at now the components of the scene itself. All right, so first, without further ado, I'm going to do an inspect element on here and ignore these warnings right here that pertain to the fact that uh, when the scene was getting built, uh, some of these overlapped each other because I randomized it. So you can just uh, go ahead and ignore them. Uh, what we want to concern ourselves with is this 3.j, 3.scene right down here. And the way that was being referenced was, if you go to the bottom of my code, uh, the very last thing I want the scene to do, and when it's very early on initializing, is to actually call this console.log uh, uh, console.log scene function. And what that does is brings up all of this information in the scene and it tells us everything that's going on in the scene and it's great for like error checking. And we can actually take a look and see what the heck is going on in this whole scene uh, by bringing this up. We'll see that we have, for example, we have the auto update on the cast shadow is false. We have the children of the scene if we expand this real quick you'll see that uh, we have an array of children that is the entire scene itself and you see that the very first thing in the array is the spotlight and then we have oh 97 meshes followed by the 99th one being a uh, perspective camera and that encompasses the whole scene all right 98 meshes okay so that's our basic scene and you'll see all this other information uh, that's included in it. So that is the scene. Let's take a look at some of the, the functions that create this. All right, so first I have, um, we'll ignore this one right here, We but this essentially is our add text function, which is this information. And you can see I'm calling that function 98 times. Um, at the start just because it's easier than just hitting this button 98 times so very simple while loop they call calls that it just says that while I is less than 98 then I plus one call this function so it just goes through when I first initialize this whole scene it calls that whole function um, most of this stuff is all the same with the exception of we've added this to the GUI controls this dot add text is equal to function dot add text um, and we're just adding that right up top here okay so a little bit different than the on change feature that if we're doing the on change we wouldn't call that in the GUI controls if we're doing the on change we would call that down here like so so you can see how these functions operate a little bit differently alright so this is listening for a change in the values right up here whereas this right up top here is waiting for you to actually just hit the button and click on it for that to operate. And you can see if I start hitting this a whole bunch of times, eventually these cellar doors are going to start disappearing. Okay, and I probably have to click it a whole bunch of times for that to, for it to be really noticeable. All right, so let's take a look at how this function works. And you'll recognize all this stuff from before, so you can just ignore all that. All right, so first thing, um, we call a text size. And then we just say math.floor. You can read about this simple function, basically. It randomizes 
a um, it gives us a random number. So math.random gives us a random number from 0 to 1. Um, and then it multiplies that by 6, and then it floors that, which basically means it rounds down. So it gives us a random size on any of these right here. All right, and so we have our text, and we have the text value, the name of it right in here, and we can put whatever we want in there to change the, the geometry of the text. In fact, what you could do potentially is create a list and do a math function that would just basically give you a random number and you could put that random number in here in that list so you could always have const you could have basically constantly changing text so this could be all a whole bunch of different stuff that you could put in here um, which could be really cool too uh, especially if you decided at some point you wanted to have this these things placed in a certain order which would be very easy to do you could have their locations in a certain order and you could actually I don't know, make, um, I guess the word for it would be a, uh, a mosaic of words or something like that. You could, you could easily create something like that using this. All right, so we have uh, our size is that random number, and our height, which is basically extrusion depth. depth. I wanted to keep the extrusion depth consistent uh, just because, honestly, if you don't, uh, it really looks awkward, so ignore that. All right, next we have the actual text, which is a new mesh. And we're giving it a name. We're giving it the cast shadow and receive shadow value on this. So essentially you can see all those shadows that are appearing and disappearing according to the position of the light. Uh, before when we had the, cat, the receive shadow, we only applied it to the plane. The other objects didn't cast shadows. This time we're turning both on just to kind of really push the graphic side of things. All right, so our positioning, okay, this basically gives us a random value that could potentially be a negative number, and I really wanted it to be between um, between 50 and, and negative 50. Uh, the reason being is that I kind of wanted this cube, but I wanted it to be uh, positioned straight ahead on the camera. So what I looked at was how I could get kind of negative values and have it positioned a certain way. Uh, so this was kind of the equation that I came up with, which basically says if you get take a random number, uh, again, math.random is going to give us a random number between 0 and 1. So if you get like 0, for example, that's going to position it at negative 49. If you get 1, it's going to position it at 50. Uh, so that gives us basically a random cube in between negative 50 and 50, uh, which is that's pretty much what we what we are looking for and then rounding down on that number just to make it nice and even All right, so then that gets added to the scene um, And then we have like a little counter that just keeps track of the uh, the numbers of the uh, of, of Scene numbers of each of these objects and we'll need that to in order to uh, remove them at a later point All right, so our next one is the delete text one You'll see we instantiate this array of text, which is is equivalent to the scene children. So uh, essentially, what that does is that scene ch ch children that we looked at earlier in the console. Uh, essentially, we're give, assigning a variable to it, and we're just sticking it in there. And again, in JavaScript, which is nice, is that you don't have to expl explicitly declare things like this is an array. Uh, basically, I could lay, at a later point uh, reassign that to something else, and it, it wouldn't have to be necessarily be an array, which is one of the night perks of JavaScript. JavaScript does not worry about that kind of stuff. All right, so we're then we're going to look at that array, and we're going to uh, look at the 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 length of it minus one because remember we start at zero. Okay, and then that's the last piece that was added. So we're assigning that object to the very last one in the array. Okay, and then what this is doing is a very on this this command is not very well you very often used. However, it is very very useful in in uh, three dot js. And basically, what it's doing is asking if that last one that was added is a mesh. Okay, that's what it's saying. It, is it that? 
okay? Because the reason being is if we look at our scene, I'm going to bring up my console real quick. You'll notice we have two objects in here in the scene that aren't in fact meshes. We have a perspective camera and we have a spotlight. All right. So this basically prevents the delete text button from remo removing the spotlight and the perspective camera. Okay? So all that's all that does. It just checks it in to make sure it's an instance if not and then what it does is it removes it. Okay, so this enables you to remove all the way down to zero or add it all the, all the way back up, essentially with the add text. Okay, so it removes that and then it readjusts the text count on it. So, and the text count just keeps track of everything. Um, so that's pretty much it for this scene. Uh, it's pretty, this one I like a lot. I can see a lot of potential for you doing some really, really cool stuff just based on this. For example, you could, you could change the, you could put the camera on a swing. You could automate its movement. Um, and you could just set this as a, a, the background to something. You could, again, automate these functions so that they randomly added and it's subtracted and we're constantly being called. Uh, there's a lot of potential for the, the different things that you could actually do with just this simple scene. Uh, so I want you to take a look at it, uh, get an idea for it. Uh, I'm going to provide the link in the description below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>